held in Astana regarding the Syria conflict. Subsequently, uh, maybe Saudi Arabia would also join the talks along with Qatar, Jordan and Iraq. Uh, we're going to be talking about this file here tonight and joining us here in the studio to shed more light on this is issue is uh, Mr. Sharif al Helwa, the political analyst. Uh, Mr. Helwa, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our talk, let's check out this report regarding uh, Russia hoping Egypt would join the Astana talks and we'll be right back. Egypt has welcomed a ceasefire agreement between Syria's government and the country's mainstream rebel groups, which went into effect in the war-ravaged country, as Moscow expressed hope that Cairo will join talks in Astana later this month. In a statement following a meeting with the Syrian opposition leader, Ahmed al-Jarba, the foreign ministry said it is of a critical importance that the Syrian forces develop a common vision to resolve the country's crisis and begin serious talks about the future of Syria. The truce was brokered by both Russia and Turkey, who support opposing sides in the war. It took effect at midnight on Thursday. The agreement is a potential breakthrough in the six-year war, civil war, that has left more than a quarter million people dead and triggered a refugee crisis across Europe. Russian President Vladimir Putin says that if the truce holds, it will be followed by peace talks next month in Kazakhstan between Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's government and opposition groups. Syria's foreign minister has welcomed the ceasefire agreement and said there is a real chance for a political settlement and said the Syrian government will attend peace talks in the Kazakh capital Astana with an open mind but suggested it would not be willing to compromise on the fate of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The Syrian top diplomat said everything is negotiable except national sovereignty and the people's right to choose its leadership, lashing out at Turkey and calling it an aggressive country and and an occupier of parts of the Syrian territories. He said Turkey was not mentioned in any of the documents that were signed, adding that Turkey was not a partner and Damascus did not negotiate with committed to implementing the ceasefire agreement and prepared to join the peace talks with the opposition rebels that will follow the deal. Turkey says the U.S.-backed Syrian Kurdish militia will not take part in the peace talks that could take place in a nationwide Syrian ceasefire agreement succeeds. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, starting off our discussion right away. Now, Mr. Helwa, first off, Egypt has been doing a lot within its efforts, uh, within the presidency and the government, trying to reestablish itself as a leading uh, player with a major role within the region. So far, over the past two, three years, how do you rate uh, Egypt's uh, stance as a major uh, player within the region? Egypt has always been a major player and they will continue to be. Uh, as a lot of politicians call uh, Egypt the heart of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to decision making in regards to all the problems in Syria, Libya, Yemen, Egypt has to have a hand in, in, in these situations. Uh, as I see it, it's developing. They're uh, moving slowly but surely and they are positioning themselves to be neutral in most situations without taking most, any sides mm -hmm. uh, in order to have uh, 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 the last word, the controlling word at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people are really um, describing Egypt's foreign policy as the Egypt being a friend uh, with everyone, not really having uh, any major enemies or any major conflicts with any other state. How long do you think Egypt can sustain that with all the, the good relationship with all the different countries, whether Russia or China or Saudi Arabia or the states, even though some of these countries might have a conflict of interest and political differences among themselves, how far do you think Egypt will sustain this friendly uh, nature of its relationship? Do you think it can actually be dragged into any sort of conflict within uh, these countries uh, and themselves? 
Well, I see that a lot of countries try to drag Egypt into some of its conflicts, uh, but Egypt has been wise enough not mm -hmm. to get involved completely. Uh, over the, sh the short period of uh, time after New Year, we just saw that Egypt has changed positions, not being too involved in the uh, Palestinian situation, not being too involved in the Libyan situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been brokering the deal with the Syrians and with the uh, Turks and uh, uh, Russians and Americans. So, and also the, the international politics uh, globally has changed really. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more uh, uh, a wave towards unification among nations. These mm -hmm. called, the Cold War era has ended really, and now it's time for uh, uh, global forces to unite, trying to stabilize the, the, the globe. Mm -hmm. Well, before we actually talk about Egypt participating within the Syrian conflict, now, a lot of countries have actually stepped up their game and they actually are starting to claim a very influential role within a conflict in Syria or uh, the Palestinian-Israeli uh, situation. Countries such as Russia, countries such as Turkey, even countries such as Iran. Now, these countries have big roles to play within these conflicts. Now, Egypt is trying to get in there. Uh, by the invitation of uh, the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, do you feel that Egypt's word or Egypt's say regarding the, uh, this situation or uh, these crises, do you feel that it has, is it still the final word or do you think players who have been there for a while within these conflicts such as Russia or Turkey have a bigger say? Well, Egypt will be always invited because it's a regional power. I mean, we're comparing now Egypt to Algeria, to Iran, to Turkey. We, ha we have the same weight as them. So they are waiting for us to have a say. They are waiting mm -hmm. for us to make a conclusion about this international conflict. Mm -hmm. So any, any, I mean, I'm not, I'm not part of the Egyptian administration, but any decision the administration takes will be welcomed because it will solve uh, resolving these conflicts. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think it took that much of a time to actually invite Egypt for such talks. Is it, is it because it was Egypt's choice not to directly be involved within the Syrian crisis and just wait for things to settle down? Maybe a ceasefire would be in place, maybe, uh, maybe the government forces would uh, really claim uh, the majority of Aleppo. Do you feel that it is Egypt's choice or maybe the other players wanted to uh, do the, the biggest part of the work on their own and then when, everyone, when everything settled down more or less, now we can invite more countries into the equation. Well, I'm not sure if it was Egypt decisions or the global forces decisions to make Egypt wait till the last moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the situation is very murky, unclear, so Egypt if I am Egypt, I would mm -hmm. wait until I make the right moves. Wars are designed uh, not in a single step. It's like a chess game. You have to prepare and move piece by piece until you reach uh, a clearer vision of how uh, the situation is. Mm -hmm. And how do you see Egypt's stance when it does uh, join the uh, Syria talks in Astana, the Kazakh capital? How do you think it would stand regarding solving the Syrian crisis? Where would, it, would it be on uh, the government uh, forces uh, side? Do you think it would support the opposition? Do you think Egypt would support Assad uh, be, being a president still? Do you think uh, they would agree to um, an agreement where Assad has to leave at some point? There has been talks that I, I've been reading about uh, that Assad will be invited for mm -hmm. uh, the new coming elections. He will be part of the elections, a democratic situation there. Uh, we have to understand the opposition has changed faces a lot, mm -hmm. from being uh, the rebels in Syria to uh, the faces of uh, the Muslim Brothers to the faces of uh, radical Islam, and now they're trying to uh, end this uh, political Islamic situation. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an international agreement to end political Islam globally. I mean, so it depends who the opposition now, who are they? If, if they are representative of the political Islam, I don't think anybody is going to cooperate with them. Mm -hmm. And now do you feel that the opposition is uh, 
in a strong position to actually walk into these negotiations or do you think that they were probably in a much stronger situation even before the government uh, forces advance uh, on Aleppo? In my opinion, they are very weak. Mm -hmm. uh, Assad forces have been very stable, moving uh, and gaining concessions all over Syria. So uh, they have a better chance of being represented politically in Syria. Yes. What about the extremist groups that are in Syria? Uh, that is one of the uh, issues as well as uh, something that always Turkey thinks about and really uh, prompts uh, Turkey's involvement uh, within this uh, issue. Do you feel that Turkey would actually have uh, an opposing idea to, uh, to how Egypt or Russia would actually see to resolve this crisis? Well, Turkey doesn't want extremist groups to uh be transferred into their territories. Mm -hmm. So they, in the past, they've been pushing them inside Syria. They've been fighting them on the borders, trying to uh, stop them from gaining concessions inside Syria. But lately, there have been a lot of bombings inside, uh, inside Turkey. Mm -hmm. And this have made uh, Turkey uh, ch change its mind about why don't we get involved? Why don't we negotiate with the Russians? Uh, maybe our position was wrong at that time. Mm -hmm. So things are moving and it's very fluid. So I think Turkey have a say inside Syria now to end uh, extremist groups. Mm -hmm. Well, you've mentioned Turkey and Russia now. Their relationship with each other has been on an ups and downs. Uh, the relationship was uh, for a while quite tense after the uh, plane crash, uh, the fighter jet that actually crashed in Turkey. Um, now, all of a sudden, Turkey made some sort of a U-turn within its relationship and they normalized relationships with Russia as well. And now Russia is leading these talks and leading these, uh, the sit-down with all the countries that will be participating trying to solve the Syrian crisis. Why do you explain, how do you explain this uh, turnaround within the Russian-Turkish relations? Well, Turkey and uh, Russia have been historically, uh, <coughs> historically very good allies. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had uh, periods of uh, cold water, but right now the situation requires uh, unity with even your opponents. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they just changed uh, uh, the scene and decided to uh, let bygones be bygones, forget about the, the conflict they had with the Russians, and let's move forward because there's economic ties as well. You got gas pipelines coming through, you got uh, economic trade. Mm -hmm. uh, I think even Iran and Turkey uh, are very good allies economically. Uh, last thing I read, uh, Turkey and Iran are uh, exchanging. Uh, lemon worth 150 million dollars a year mm -hmm. just lemon <laughs> yes so well we will be talking definitely uh, about uh, iran later on now do you feel that turkey has it in its best interest for the uh, the government forces the government authority uh, would actually prevail in such talks in syria or do you think that they would still like to see even if it's the government forces uh, taking over, really taking charge, they would still like to see Assad uh, moving out. The original talk, they wanted him out. Mm -hmm. But I think the situation has changed and he managed to uh, stay in power. And now this is the guy we're going to be dealing with. This mm -hmm. is how the Russians are thinking. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, President Bashar al-Assad actually mentioned that for these talks, he would not... Um, uh, Really, it's not about him leaving or staying, but he would still assume office until they actually um, form some sort of a referendum, if they need to change the constitution, if they need to hold presidential elections, and then the people would choose their leader, whether if it is uh, Bashar al-Assad or not. Do you feel that this is the right attitude uh, getting into the talks, or do you think that even if the talks said, well, sorry, but he needs to step down, he would still abide by it? No, I think this is the right uh, approach. Mm -hmm. and the Americans uh, in Iraq have forced Saddam to step down, and they went in full force, and things were not as uh, rosy as it would have been. Yes. So now it's like, well, maybe he has 
uh, supporters in his own country, well, why don't we include them in the political arena? Let's, this is the democratic process that should accept all forces. Mm -hmm. So this is how they're shaping the new political move in Syria. Yes. Well, what about now Iran? You've mentioned Iran being good, uh, good with good relations uh, with Turkey. Now, how much of Iran's influence do you feel has on this Syrian conflict and within the region? Because there was a lot of talk about Iran trying to uh, have a stronger influence within the whole region. How far is that true? How true is that? And really, is that something that is welcomed by the other uh, Arab states, the Middle East countries and North Africa? Do you feel that this is a good thing, a bad thing, or still not yet to be known? Well, from an economic point of view, I think Iran is a major power. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is nothing wrong with trading with them. Uh, Iran have uh, an interest in spreading its arms in the region for historical reasons, emotional reasons, uh, whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we're going to move to talk about the Shia presence in the region. Yes, they need to have an influence. That's Iran's agenda. They want to have an influence in the Gulf countries, mm -hmm. in some North, North African countries, etc. Uh, so they support the Shia population in these countries. Mm -hmm. uh, in case things don't go wrong, they will have supporters. Yes. But if uh, now we're talking economic trade, when mm -hmm. there is economic trade moving forward and everyone is benefiting, there is no reason to have a Shia uprising somewhere or to have Hezbollah supporters. These are all uh, a curtain for economic deals that will happen later on. Mm -hmm. Well, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan and Iraq are also expected to join uh, the talks regarding uh, the Syrian situation later on. How do you feel that would affect uh, Iran's influence? Uh, because not all of these countries have the strongest relationship uh, with Iran. Do you feel that now within these talks there will be some sort of uh, political conflict between Iran and some of these countries, uh, such as Saudi Arabia, for instance? Well, Saudi Arabia's big sphere mm -hmm. is Iran. and. Uh, uh, I th this is my opinion. In the near future, they will change their position mm -hmm. because Iran will be welcomed into the international arena. Mm -hmm. So it's either, that's what George Bush said, <laughs> it's either you're with us or against us. Mm -hmm. So Iran is needed in the international market now and they need them politically, they need them, uh, they need their oil, they need uh, to open new markets. It's a, it's a virgin market. Mm -hmm. and they have been having sanctions since the early 80s. So. Uh, the entire world will move into Iran. So Saudi Arabia will have an interest to move in with the entire world. Mm -hmm. So I think they will change their position soon. Otherwise, we're prolonging the conflict. Yes. Yeah. Well, talking about Iran and really being accepted uh, as, uh, within the international community as a major player. Now, the relationship with the U.S. administration always sort of dictates or uh, really signals how the nature of the international community will be towards Iran or any other country. Now, even though the nuclear uh, program uh, deal that was made by Iran and the U.S. and its allies, still the U.S. actually uh, extended a 10-year economic, uh, economic sanctions on Iran uh, a few weeks ago. Is that, are we getting mixed signals from the U.S. administration regarding its relationship with Iran and how should that be received uh, by the, the rest of the international community? Well, the U.S. is buying itself some time until the situation is clear. Mm -hmm. So they have extended the sanctions, but at the same time they are uh, retroactively trying to remove the sanctions. Mm -hmm. So it's just a political move to buy themselves some time and at the same time don't appear the entire world and their own people that, oh, suddenly we're friends with Iran. Mm -hmm. That needs some preparation because yes. they have been building a lot of hate mm -hmm. uh, towards uh, Iran for the last 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. so. And what about Donald Trump becoming a president uh, within uh, a few days, actually? Do you think that because everyone was excited about 
the new dynamics that he has or his new ideas or strategies regarding combating extremism and terrorism and really the crises uh, within the Middle East, it would be different than what Hillary Clinton was planning to do or what Obama has been doing. Do you feel that new strategies might change what's going on within uh, the crises in the region right now? Yes, I think uh, Donald Trump will not be physically or apparently involved in the Middle East. The American people or the American public have been tired of getting uh, America involved in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. they, they don't see a purpose for it, at least for the general public who is not political scientists. Mm -hmm. But uh, so uh, Donald Trump will try to appear as they're only supporting and advising and providing training and opening economic markets uh, in a peaceful light. Mm -hmm. So I, a lot of people are expecting him to be involved in major wars in the region, but mm -hmm. that's, not, uh, that's against my opinion. Yes. What about now Egypt is strong friends with uh, Russia, it has been uh, for quite some time, and we've seen before, right before uh, Donald Trump uh, becoming the president-elect, now the relationship between the US and Russia has been on an ups and downs and even after he was elected we're still seeing a lot of reports regarding uh, Russia behind uh, manipulation of the presidential elections. Do you feel that there will be any sort of uh, conflict of interest between Egypt, Russia and the US? Well, Egypt has uh, historically been an ally for the US. Mm -hmm. uh, since 1979 uh, peace accords. Uh, for the time being, I think they will continue to be allies for the U.S., but uh, they will lean towards uh, benefiting the Russian government or the Russian state, get, giving them concessions, supporting mm -hmm. them politically. Uh, but uh, I don't believe that uh, we will move out uh, f from the sphere of the American influence very quickly. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to broker uh, the deal between both states. Also, uh, Russia and America are really uh, needed in the world. Mm -hmm. You need two major superpowers to make a balance. So, uh, as a wise person, I would not really lean towards one side. I will always try to balance the situation. Yes, definitely. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, even the relationship between Egypt and Russia has uh, gone through its own turbulences uh, of late. However, it has gone now back to normal. Let's uh, check out uh, this report regarding the Egyptian-Russian relations even after the plane crash that took uh, place earlier in Sinai Peninsula, and we'll be right back. Arab League's Assistant Secretary General Hossam Zaki reiterated that there are no tensions between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Speaking to reporters at the conference held at the Arab League's premises in Cairo, Zaki blamed the media over spreading that the two countries' relations are tense saying that any disagreements had been exaggerated. He reiterated that he did not see the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Egypt had escalated to a tense level, adding that officials from both countries repeatedly insisted that relations are not affected. He noted that rumors have been stamped from the media falsely announced news, stressing that the Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghid exerts his utmost efforts to achieve same views on the various topics between the League's members. The conference addressed a number of issues in the region as well as discussing the ongoing preparations of the upcoming Arab Summit, which is scheduled to take place in Jordan in March. Last month, Foreign Minister Samah Shukri denied reports over turbulent relations between the two nations, describing the relationship as a special. Relations between Egypt and Saudi Arabia flourished in April following Saudi King's visit to Egypt, during which the two countries agreed on providing Egypt with 700,000 tons of refined oil products per month, for which Saudi Arabia was backing. In October, Saudi Arabia informed Egypt that shipments of oil products expected under a $23 billion aid deal have been halted indefinitely. The Saudi government has also placed an important ban on certain Egyptian products last month over alleged contamination 
According to Egyptian official sources, court postponed viewing another appeal by the state against the previous court declaration that ruled on the annulment of the Egyptian-Saudi maritime demarcation agreement to the 12th of February. The appeal was filed by the agreement in August to stop the implementation of the administrative court ruling on the 21st of June, which annulled the agreement and asserted that the islands of Tirand and Sanafir are Egyptian. This appeal stated that the judiciary is not authorized to look into such agreements. It is the government's third appeal against the administrative court ruling. The first appeal was filed against the initial verdict a few hours after the administrative court had passed the verdict. The second appeal was filed in the Cairo Court of Urgent Matters to stop the verdict from being implemented. Last week, the Urgent Matters Court ruled in favor of stopping the implementation of the verdict, validating the demarcation agreement.